friends and uh, welcome to my channel. I'm Hugo Correa. I hope you're doing well. Um, and uh, in this case, I wanna, you'll see that I'm in an enclosure over here and this is a shower that I'm building. This shower used to be a fiberglass enclosure, like a cocoon, right? And the problem is that although we have a um, 48 inches over here, at the end, this, this shower was like 42 inches inside and instead of 36, it was like 30 because the thickness of this shower enclosure, this fiberglass enclosure, was making the space smaller. Besides, it had like a seat, so it became really uncomfortable. It had a door that had a lot of frame around, it had a lot of mold. The material over here was, was turning yellow because of the years and, you know, the water was accumulating there, so it was a little mess through the thing and uh, my friends were not happy with the shower. So we went ahead and plan for a new shower, right? And there are a few things that I wanna let you know before you start building your shower. The first one and one important one is that whenever you're gonna plan your demolition, you need to be aware that there are things that are, can be hidden inside the walls, right? So you have water lines, gas lines, uh, sewer lines, um, wiring, electrical wiring, um, duct work, and all those things, and that means that you need to be really careful when you're doing demolition, right? You need to be uh, cautious when you're cutting, especially if you're gonna use a saw saw or a reciprocate saw, you wanna make sure that you don't cut that deep and you cut in a slanted way so you know how you control your cuts, right? Even though like that, you need to be constantly looking at inside the walls and see if you can guess what's going on there before you continue because sometimes there is nothing in the walls. And like in this case, we have a whole bunch of wires going on and, and, and outlets on the other side and all the outlets on the other side and, and the duct work over here so you need to be aware of those things right so you need to be careful with that make sure that uh if you can cut off the water of the house that's that would be a wise idea because sometimes the vibration can burst the pipes especially if they're really old so you want to do the stuff you don't want to have accidents like i've seen before um so um let's say well you're going to change your your shower right and you want to make sure that whenever you do the transition for a new faucet, you test the lines with the new faucet. So what I did is that I put a new faucet and, and, and I put a cap at the end. It's a, it's a, it's a pipe that I, that I put over there that, that holds the water, it's a plug. And then you turn on the water and make sure that there is, there is no um, uh, water seeping through the steam, dripping somewhere, you don't have leaks. That has to be done before you put the panels, obviously, right? You want to make sure that you finish your job and you you go ahead and do the stuff so that's that's really crucial because you don't want water little drips of water falling inside your walls and you don't know until it's too late right so that's that's an important thing the other thing is that you need to be aware that can be areas that are rotted because if you you know your shower or what it used to be the tub was leaking in a corner or somewhere can be rotted in the wood especially obviously in your in a wood structure and in that case happened over here we had a little area that the the, the 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 floor already the boards were rotted so we need to replace the stuff we need to fix that before we we start working with all the materials on top right so you need to make sure that you do that stuff when you're going to do the transitions on the drains you want to make sure that you have the proper drain for your new shower pan now there are different materials that you can use for your shower pans i'm not kind of going with one particular one because depending on whether or not I use different brands. The Oddly is a company that I use that, that makes different type of plumbing things and they have this waterproofing PVC liner, right? It's good. Uh, other companies like Schluter, they make other um, bathroom enclosure systems that, that are work, uh, that apply with on cupping things in motor and all these things. So uh, motor that is not modified so water um, it's not trapped in between, moisture is not trapped in between the, this fiberglass mesh that they sell and all the stuff, right? And, um, you know, I use concrete boards, but a lot of people ask me, well, uh, can I use drywall, regular drywall? No, it's not designed for wet areas. Now, I've seen drywall that is designed for wet surfaces, but the problem that I've seen with those, the most common problems um, are on the bottom, like the last two feet, they, they rot through the years. Nothing on the walls, but it's on the, on the bottom because that's where the moisture can come in. So that's why I'd rather work with concrete boards. 
and, and other products that I'm going to tell you in a moment, but, but I'd rather use concrete boards, half inch concrete boards with you know, concrete board screws and all these things. And, and then when you're building your, your shower, you, you want to make sure that, that you do it in the right way because there are uh, regulations, there are requirements nowadays. Back in the days, they, they didn't go through the stuff other than having you know, your shower liner there to hold the water inside so it won't spill. But now they say, well, we don't want you to open the plug when you're testing the, the shower pan and water staying in little corners and things like that. We want to make sure that all the water goes inside the pan before you put the, the last layer of, of concrete, right? That's bed of concrete. And that is achieved by using something called a pre-sloping, right? Pre-sloping is the, 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 the way you do a little pre-inclination toward the drain over the, 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 the wooden surface. You know, sometimes I put a piece of asphalt paper or, or, or plastic or something. And then I, I create this little slope towards the center of the drain before I put the shower liner. So what happens is that once it's dry and you put your shower liner and you put your drain connections and systems, uh, when you're testing the water, when you open it up, all the water goes in, right? Then you know that you can actually put your bed of, of mortar around or make sure like a sand topping mix, right? Um, then I'll show some videos about that stuff. But then once you, once you do the stuff, then um, you ensure that water is not gonna get trapped over there because the problem sometimes is that water seeps through the, the, the bed of, of you know of a concrete that you're building or that cement or whatever or like sand topping cement whatever you use this guy loved using sand topping sand, sand mix that's like sand and concrete together and mix that that bed it's called um a top uh codo bedding mix in different places right or sand mix sand topping whatever they you know so what happens is that when you build that stuff in that way with a nice inclination towards the drain you guarantee that when water seeps through even though the water is going underneath it's actually going through the whip holes of your drain and i have videos where i show all that stuff i'm going to make even more videos interesting about the topic right so it's, it's that that is important so let's say you have all that done you have all your concrete boards you have a nice niche nice shelving over here you want to make sure that you have a lot of space. In this case, we, we were able to put a lot of space. You have your concrete boards around nice and flush. And you want to make sure that you start putting um, some fiberglass mesh that is designed for this. And I say that because sometimes if you put regular fiberglass mesh, that thing starts disintegrating because it's not designed for cementious purposes, right? So what happens when I have corners, especially in a niche, I put one in the corner, it has like a self-sticking material, then one piece over here and one piece of tape over here, right? The same thing on the other side, and I put it inside. And after I put in all the joints, all the corners, all the bottom and the, and the curve and all those things, I apply a waterproofing membrane. Now they sell this waterproofing membrane, it's like a, like a, like a liquid plastic, that once it's, it's nice and, and nice and dry, it becomes hard, like plastic. So that gives you an extra waterproofing um, uh, possibility there so water if it sips through a corner or something it will it will be contained there so that's a really practical thing because you can work with that in many ways right so you apply the stuff and then you continue working with your concrete um, walls now prepared for tiling right so those those are important things regardless of what type of finishing that you're gonna do in the walls if your walls are nice and safe then you, you can um, rest assured that that bathroom is going to last for many many more years right and so you don't have problems oh, also you have to give just a little inclination on the shelf just a little bit so water won't stay either on this side right so once you're finished let that dry and then start working with your tiling process right so those are the tips that i want to give you before you do any type of bathroom or shower restoration so you don't have to pay the price of you know calling the i don't know the emergency services or plumbers or electricians because something happened in between the demolition or something fell because it was not prepared accordingly right so that's it um i hope this video will help you and if you have any questions please let me know uh, i will leave uh, in the description box companies that can provide the, the liners and you know the, the covering that you can use and all the stuff that may help you as well i'll see you in the next one bye bye you made it to the end of the video i'm really happy about it 
Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit that little notification bell, and see more of those videos that I'm going to put around and stay tuned for more videos. I'll see you soon.